Hi, my name is Scott and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I am a practicing physician assistant working in endocrinology. I'm also a type 1 diabetic. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, you're interested in diabetes related news, tech talk, product reviews, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be coming out with new content all the time. And if you're enjoying the content, you're liking the videos, please go ahead and give them a like. I'd certainly appreciate that. So what I wanted to talk about today is ways you can decrease the pain you feel with insulin injections. I'm sure a lot of you are on multiple daily injections like myself, and any way you can find to decrease the pain a little bit with some of those injections is certainly a welcome thing. So let's talk about a few different ways some I've used myself to decrease the pain with insulin injections. First one that I wanted to go over is something that you may already be doing, and that's to make sure that the insulin you're injecting with is at room temperature. And the reason is because injecting with cold insulin can actually lead to more painful injections. This isn't something that I've just experienced myself. This is actually multiple sources stating the same thing. American Diabetes Association, uh, Harvard Health, uh, stating basically injecting with cold insulin can be more painful than injecting with insulin that's at room temperature. And the fear with a lot of us I know we have is that basically um, if I keep my insulin at room temperature, is it going to last as long? Is it going to wind up going bad? And the answer is there's really no issue keeping your insulin at room temperature. And if you look at the expiration date here for commonly used insulins, most of them last about a month um, at room temperature. Some like Traceba actually last even longer than that. So when you're actively using your insulin, most of us don't keep an insulin around for longer than a month. Um, you could go ahead and keep it at room temperature. It's going to lead to less painful injections and certainly something that you want to start doing. So the second thing that I wanted to talk about is something that most of us already know about, but not everybody puts into practice. And that's to make sure that you're not reusing your insulin needles. Now, there's a number of reasons why this is a bad idea. It leads to increased rate of infection. It can lead to increased incidence of lipohypertrophy, which is scar tissue buildup. Um, but there's a couple reasons why it actually leads to more painful injections. The first one is when you reuse a needle, it actually becomes more dull over time. And we can look at this exaggerated image of a needle that's been reused multiple times. And you can see as you use it more and more times that the insulin needle or the needle becomes more dull over time. And that can obviously lead to more painful injections. But the second one is one that not a lot of people actually know about, and that's most insulin needles, pen needle syringes, actually have a layer of lubricant on the needle. And that helps with um, injection. It helps the insulin or the needle to slide in easier. It helps it to become less painful. Now, when you inject with the first time, that lubricant is generally lost. So if you inject again with the same needle, you no longer have that layer of lubricant and it's, it makes it a lot harder to actually get into the skin. It can become a lot more painful because of that. So in addition to the fact that it becomes more dull, it also loses that layer of lubricant. So many reasons why reusing the same um, insulin needle is a bad idea and can lead to more painful injections. Now, the third thing that I wanted to talk about, and this may not be an option for everybody, but you may want to consider switching the type of insulin you're using as certain insulins can be a little bit more painful to inject with than others. So I'm specifically talking about insulin glargine. Insulin glargine includes popular brands of insulin like Lantus, uh, Basiclar, and to JO. And the reasons why sometimes these insulins can become more painful is they're actually more acidic. So if you're not familiar with pH levels, pH levels basically indicate how acidic a substance is. And the lower the pH number, the more acidic it is. So Lantus, Basiclar, and Tujeo, all the insulin glargine variety, all have a pH of four. Now you compare that with some other popular insulins like Traceba and um, Levomir, as well as some other ones they have a pH that's closer to the seven. So much higher pH level indicating a much less acidic substance. And generally these will cause less pain. Now this may not be the case for everybody. Some people may use Lantus and have no issues, but if you are having pain and your insulin and your insurance will cover a different type of insulin, a less acidic variety like the Traceba or Levomir, you may wanna consider switching if you are having a lot of problems with the current insulin that you're using, if you're using an insulin glargine because of the increased acidity level of this type of insulin. Fourth one that I wanted to go over is choosing the correct needle size. Now I'm talking about specifically the gauge and the length of the needle. Let's first go over the gauge. So the gauge indicates how thick or thin a needle is. And the higher the number, the thinner the needle is. So for instance, a 34 gauge needle is gonna be much thinner than a 30 gauge needle. And currently the thinnest needle that's out in the market, at least here in the United States, is a 34 gauge needle. It's made by a company called Droplet Micron. So that 34 gauge needle is gonna be the thinnest possible needle. And obviously the thinner the needle is, the less painful it'll be. So if your insurance will cover a gauge that's higher, say you're using a 32 gauge and you can switch to a 33 or a 34, that'll generally lead to a less painful injection and it's definitely a good idea. The second thing that I wanted to talk about in addition to the gauge of the needle is also the length of the needle. 
Now, when you're injecting with insulin, you're trying to get into the subcutaneous layer. Now, you have to get through the skin, obviously, to get through the subcutaneous layer. And the skin thickness in the most commonly injected areas like the abdomen, the legs, the buttocks, and the arms is generally about 2 to 2.5 millimeters. So you need a needle that's just a little bit longer than that to penetrate into the subcutaneous tissue, but not too long that it gets into the muscle layer because the muscle layer, when you inject in there, can cause to cause absorption problems, but it can also lead to more pain with the injection. So you want to make sure you're choosing the correct size to get into the subcutaneous, but not any further. And most people, that's going to be around a four millimeter, maybe up to six millimeter length syringe or pen needle. And actually they did a study and they showed up to, I think like 98 to 99 percent of people will actually be suited with a four millimeter to get into that subcutaneous layer. So a four millimeter is going to be the right size for most people. And make sure if you're a thin individual um, or you're using a very long um, length needle, like an eight millimeter, be careful because you may be injecting into the muscle layer. And this can obviously cause a lot more pain than injecting into the subcutaneous layer. So make sure you're using the um, largest gauge needle, large again, remember the higher number, like a 34 gauge, because that'll be a much thinner needle. And make sure you're using the right needle length, but not too long to get into the muscle layer, just long enough to get into the subcutaneous tissue. And the final thing that I wanted to go over is something that's very simple, but a lot of people don't actually practice this. And that's actually to make sure you let the alcohol dry before you inject. Now, if you've ever gotten alcohol into a cut, an open wound, you know that it's very painful. If you use hand sanitizer and you have a cut somewhere, it's gonna start burning and stinging. If you don't let the alcohol dry before you do your injection, it can actually cause to that alcohol getting into that little hole where the injection went and causing a lot more pain. So something that's very simple, but just make sure you, you let the alcohol dry before you do the injection. And this can lead to decreased pain with your injection. So a quick recap of the five ways that we talked about today. The first thing is to make sure you're using insulin that's at room temperature. The second thing is to make sure that you're not reusing your insulin needles. Third thing, if you have an insulin that you're using, you're using insulin glargine, you're having a lot of pain, consider some of the other ones that are less acidic, like for Cebalevimir, if it's a possibility with your insurance. Uh, fourth one, again, choosing the right insulin size, that's the gauge and the length of the needle. And then finally, let your alcohol dry before you go ahead and do your injection. Those are five quick ways, things that I use myself that I found to improve the pain with injections. If you have any that maybe I missed, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear them. And thank you so much for watching the video.